everyone! Today we're going to be looking at the process of applying to vet school and some helpful hints along the way. Now this is a little bit different from what I usually do, so if you're one of my regular subscribers, sorry that we're not having some regular content this week. I promise it'll be entertaining and we'll be back to normal next week. For anyone here who is applying to veterinary school, I hope this will be very useful for you and please feel free to comment any questions or concerns in the comment section below. I'm here and I'm happy to help. So for anyone who hasn't met me before because they're just stumbled upon this because they want to apply to veterinary school someday, my name is Cecilia Harmon. I'm a first year veterinary student at the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm an out-of-state student. I'm actually from Pennsylvania and my plan in life is to go back to Pennsylvania and to work in general practice. Um, and I really love cats and I have four cats if anyone was wondering. So this presentation I'll be giving is actually a modified presentation which I gave to the pre-veterinary students at my undergrad institution which is Clare University if anyone didn't know that. So some of the information is a little bit location specific but I'll try to clarify if it is or if it isn't. Alright, let's get started. Without further ado, welcome to Vet School or Bus, where we're going to go through a whirlwind tour of how to apply to veterinary school with some exclusive tips and tricks along the way. And I'm your host, Cecilia Harmon. As I'm sure you all know, vet school is very difficult to get into. If you weren't scared already, a couple years ago, Ohio State had over 1,300 applicants for only about 160 seats. However, we can combat these terrifying statistics with a stunning application. So obviously vet school's hard to get into, so they say that beggars can't be choosers, you basically just have to go wherever you get in. However, your happiness is still important. Remember that you're going to be spending four plus years at this vet school, so you're going to want to go to somewhere that you're very comfortable at. So my advice to everyone is to try to visit as many schools as possible. There's about 30 in the US, and I have a very handy map of them if you didn't know where they were already. I would just Go and visit as many as you possibly can. Plan a road trip if you have to. I mean, yes, you can read about the school online and watch videos, but re being there is so much more than pictures. You can pick up on the exact vibe of the place and learn a lot of things and like that you couldn't get from just like reading the website. So remember, once you're there, there's no transferring. You're stuck there. Most, basically all the schools have a no transfer policy. So like once you get in, you're just like stuck there. And yes, I did take my own advice. I visited seven veterinary schools and I learned a lot of valuable things along the way. I learned that uh, I didn't really care for Philadelphia, so UPenn probably wasn't for me. And I also learned that, hey, some school in the middle of Blacksburg is probably like the coolest school ever and I wanted to apply there and now I'm here. So. So as you're picking schools that you want to apply to, there are some factors that you need to consider. You need to consider the location. Do you want to be close to home or really far away from home? Another thing you need to consider is the cost of tuition of the school. Now all schools kind of relatively have the same cost, however if you're going as an out-of-state student it might be more expensive. But then some states, like I know Ohio State does this, you can get in-state tuition after a year so that might make it cheaper than another school if you're considering things. So just try to do some number crunching and figure out, depending on where you live, what would be a cheaper option for you. Another important factor when choosing a school is the area that it is in. You need to look at the cost of living. Like again, I hate to like rag on UPenn, but UPenn's in Philadelphia, so the cost of living there is really, really high. So while you might look at the tuition and be like, oh okay, that's comparable to other schools, once you factor in cost of tuition, it's more Another thing you might want to consider is specific tracks that the school might offer or specific dual programs if you really know what you want to do with your career. Like some schools offer um, dual PhD programs, dual MPH programs, dual MBA programs. So if you know that you'd want to do specifically one of those things, you might want to target your application towards schools that offer those things. Once you went all through all this and made your short list of schools that you want to apply to, you need to talk to your advisor about getting those prereqs in as soon as possible. Now, basically all the prereqs are the same, like there's a lot of overlapping, like most of the schools are going to require your basic sciences and basic animal classes, but there are some oddballs that stick out, like NC State wants an animal nutrition class and that's not a super common prereq, and I know the school I'm at, Virginia, Maryland, uh, they want uh, medical terminology, which again is a prereq that a lot of schools like wouldn't want, so you need to look at each of these specific schools and take careful notes at about what prereqs they need and you need to talk to your academic advisor about getting them fit into your schedule as soon as possible. So next step after you've done all this is actually doing the application process, which is through the VimCAS. If you didn't know what VimCAS was, it's a centralized application. So you fill out one application and it goes to all of the schools that you pick. It's very handy. Now there's a couple of the oddball schools that aren't um, in the continental United States that you might have to apply to separately, but 
for the most part, yes, it's just all within the Vimcast and it's very organized. And uh, one thing to note about the Vimcast is that they have a very strict deadline in mid-September. They will not take your application after that deadline. If your application isn't complete before that deadline, they're just gonna be like, oh, sorry, apply again next year, which is absolutely awful. So you wanna make sure to start this application as absolutely soon as possible. And you need to have some time in for the finalization process in case you accidentally like entered something in wrong or something. So basically, you wanna start your application considering that you will want to submit this by like the second week of August at the latest. Okay, so we have the login screen for the Vimcast, nice and friendly. And then we have the homepage. And as you can see, there are four very neat categories that we're gonna fill out and go through. So our first category is personal information. Pretty straightforward. You put in your name and your address and some other personal information that you probably already know at the top of your head. However, there is one big thing in this category and that is the essays. Now, I'm not to freak anyone out, but these are the most important essays that you will fill out in your entire life. This is your chance to impress the people reading the application and make you shine as an applicant. You want to make them unique and special and you want them to be absolutely perfect. So, cause that's what sets your application apart. Cause obviously like your name and address isn't gonna impress anyone, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I know what I did when I wrote my essays is I had as absolutely many people read them over as I could. So for example, I had like one of my professors read it and then I had someone who's really good at grammar read it and then I had my sister read them because she doesn't know anything about veterinary medicine. So I thought, well, if she can get the gist of it by reading the essays then they're probably okay. So all right, so we finished with that section and the next section is academic history. The academic history section's pretty straightforward. You have to hand enter all of your transcripts from every uh, college you attended. I don't think you have to do your high school transcripts, but you do have to do all your college transcripts. So that would be like, even if you transferred or went to a community college, those need to go in there too. So at, while we're on the topic of transcripts and grades, um, remember as you're applying to try to keep up your grades, um, average admitted GPA is 3.4. Anything you have above that might help you stand out above other people. So this is also the section where you would put in your GRE scores. Now on the topic of the GRE, I got some good news. You guys might not have to take it. I didn't take the GRE. Uh, there's an increasing number of veterinary schools who do not require the GRE. I just so happened that my top three choices for schools didn't require it, so I just didn't take it. So the next section is your supporting information section. This is definitely the longest section and I probably spent about 30 hours on this section. Luckily I was recovering from wisdom teeth surgery, so I had nothing better to do anyways. So the first thing in that section is the letters of recommendation. Now you're gonna wanna have three. One of them has to be a veterinarian. Um, the other one you're going to want to get a professor to do, someone who can speak to your academic ability. So try to get one who's in the sciences, but it's more important that you get one who's maybe had you for multiple classes or knows you really well. Then the last one's kind of a freebie. Um, a boss would be a really good one, a manager, a pastor, a research advisor, just someone who's not a vet or a professor. That would be a good op third option. Um, however, some schools do require that you have two letters from veterinarians, so you would have to look into that. I know the schools that I applied to just required that one of them was from a vet. So, after, we're going to talk a little bit about letters of recommendation etiquette. After you kindly ask someone, in person mind you, if they're willing to write you a letter, there are some things that you need to provide for them. First of all, you need to give them a copy of your resume. Now theoretically, this should be a person that would know the things that would be on your resume, but your resume is a good way to help them remember like dates of things, like a professor might not remember what year you took their class because everything meddles together, you know? If this is a boss or a manager or a research advisor writing the letter, you're gonna wanna give them a list of everything that you did while you were there. Now, in theory, again, they should know the gist of what you did because you want to choose people who know you really well. However, there are instances when life gets crazy and they might have turned their back while you were doing this cool thing with my pet or cleaning the floors or something like that. I know for the vet that I work with, I gave him a list because sometimes he was working out front and I was working in the back and I'm like, you know, maybe he didn't know I cleaned this cage one time. So I'm just going to write it down so I make sure that he knows and he puts it in there. Another thing is you're gonna wanna give these people a list of the schools you're applying to and a list of the values of the school. Most of the values of the schools are right on the website, pretty easy to find. But if the school, like if your number one choice is big value is teamwork, then you need to tell your letter writers so they can incorporate all the times that you really brought everyone together and worked as a team and worked as a cohesive group because you're gonna wanna tell them, hey, yeah, that time I did that thing, yes, definitely put that in there because I think the school I'm going to apply to is gonna eat that up. Remember to tell these people that they need to showcase your uniqueness because remember that the people reading these letters of recommendation are reading like a literally a thousand letters of recommendation. So you want your letter to stick out, but in a good way. 
So after you get your letters, your next step is to thank the people who wrote them for you. Good letters of recommendation take a lot of time. And that those people did that for you because they care about you. So you need to give them a card, bake them a pie, I don't care. You need to show your appreciation because like that was something very nice that they did for you. Okay, so next you're gonna wanna log your veterinary job shadowing hours. So this is any experience you have while there is a veterinarian present. There's a lot of variation and a lot of arguments about how many hours you need. So it seems between 250 and 1,000 hours, that's a really good amount. I didn't have like a ton of hours when I came in. I know some kids come in like, I have like 3,000 hours. Yeah, that wasn't me, I had like 300. So one thing that veterinary schools seem to like is a big diversity of where you're getting your veterinary job shadowing hours from. You might have a lot of hours, but if you're getting them all from one vet, do you really understand the breadth of the profession? Other things that would really stick out in an application is really non-traditional veterinary experiences. I have a list of really good non-traditional veterinary experiences. So I personally went to the Penn Vet Summer Program. It was really cool because we got to work with like board certified clinicians, which is something that you might not get a lot of experience of in undergrad depending on where you are. And if you do look closely on the list, you can see that Disney World has like an internship for pre-veterinary students. Yes, Disney World. Can you imagine like taking care of animals and being like, this is Mickey Mouse's animal? I don't know. I kind of wish I would have done that, but I didn't. But hey, that could be you. You could do that. Sounds like fun. Mickey Mouse is probably going to be there. So there's also a section for you to log your other experiences. And you're going to want to log everything and anything you have ever done. So there's animal experiences. So that's things that you did with animals that weren't with the vet. So that would be like working at an animal shelter. Also, work experience is important. You might have a job in a veterinary clinic, but they also like to see that you have a job that doesn't have to do with animals because it really showcases that you might have good people skills. So if you worked at an ice cream shop, put that on there. People might think that, oh, this isn't important, this shouldn't go on the application, but no, really, anything and everything that you think can go on there, just put it on there because it's not gonna, it's better be safe than sorry. I was talking to a pre-vet student and she was wearing a Red Cross t-shirt and I said, did you give blood? And she said, yes. And I said, put that on your application. <laughs> I had that I was an honor roll on ninth grade in mine. Literally, you can just put everything on there. Just please do. A type of experience that people might forget about is research experience. Research is very important. Um, a lot of schools that I visited really thought that research was an important thing when they were looking at applicants. Some schools even will count your research hours as veterinary hours. You have to look into that. I'm not sure which specific schools though. Things like grant writing, poster presentation, attending scientific conferences, they not only look great on your application, but they're honestly very good skills that you'd want to carry into your future. It might seem boring, but it, research really is a lot of fun. I was in a research lab, I took care of rats, I did research on stem cells, I had a lot of fun. An important thing to keep in mind as you're gaining these experiences is that you need to write everything down. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. Because when you're going to get to the application, they're going to want to know the name of your supervisor, they're going to want to know the address of the place, they're going to know phone contact numbers, they're going to know exact dates that you were there, how many hours you were there. Just save yourself some time in the wrong run and write everything down now so it becomes just a matter of copying and pasting things off of a spreadsheet once you get to the application process. For me personally, no one gave me that advice, so that was kind of horrible for me. Luckily, I'm kind of weird about things, so I already had a spreadsheet going of like life experiences because like I cannot, like I have a list of movies I've seen, I'm just, I record things I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Alright, we have been through all that and we are on the last section of the Femcast, yay! So okay, so the last section is program materials. So this is school specific things. So this category will vary depending on what schools you tell the Vimcast you want to apply to. And unfortunately, mostly this includes more essays. Okay, so finally you can submit your application. So the application fee is about $200 plus an additional fee depending on what schools you apply to. Additional fees on top of that. However, you may qualify to not pay anything. I personally didn't pay anything to submit my application. If you, there's certain paperwork that you can fill out that if you qualify for a Pell Grant, they'll just waive the application fee and like send you a refund check. I don't know if the Pell Grant's a Pennsylvania thing or if that's like a nationwide thing, but definitely look into that. Like if you qualify for some sort of state assisted grant, you probably don't have to pay anything for your best school application. Something to keep in mind. Oh, you guys thought you were done. That's cute. It's time for some supplemental applications. So these are unique for each school. Some of them will just be through an email. Some of them will be through an online portal. Definitely don't forget about them because that would be awful. Don't want to forget about those because that's like the, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Don't forget about your supplemental applications. 
So I apologize if some of that information was overwhelming. Please enjoy some pictures of my cats. Well, that's all I have for today. And I really hope that I helped you guys in the application process. And again, if you're one of my regular subscribers, I hope that this wasn't too boring for you. If you have any questions at all, even just about being a veterinary student, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm here for you guys. Like, I, I love answering questions, so like, go ahead. You're not bothering me in any way, shape, or form. Well, until next time, goodbye.